We are live from digital address GA0992539 in Kokomemle, Accra, on DSTV channel 421 and Go TV channel 144. Good morning, everybody. The show is Joy News Interactive. Social media handle for Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram is Joy News on TV. My name is Selina Ampo. Somewhere in France, this is what is happening. Yeah, you're right. Here it goes. And in Ghana, the annual ritual of flooding is at it again. Now, many parts of the national capital uh, today have been inundated as choke drains have made it difficult for rainwater to freely flow. This is not the first time Accra has been hit by floods, and almost every year the story or the reasons being given for the floods are the same. The cycle of flood is here again, and year by year, major cities in the country get flooded. The reasons, as always, are the same lack of planning, pouring of waste into drains, and a host of other human activities when will it ever stop it was the darkest and longest night ever in ghana's history a very tragic one indeed june 3 2015 will forever be imprinted in the memory of residents hydrological engineer at the national disaster management organization nadmo wise a metaphor has blamed yesterday's flooding on blockages in channels leading to the odor drain the government will in the coming days announce a comprehensive plan to deal permanently with the perennial flooding in the capital accra the 18th june evening flood has killed 10 persons according to nadmo six died in accra one in the central region and three from the Volta region. Now parts of the country were flooded Sunday evening leaving properties destroyed and many people displaced. The floods have largely been attributed to choked. Seven lives were lost following Sunday's heavy downpour in Accra which led to massive floods in certain parts of the capital. This brings us to a number of a total number of 12 lives lost as a result of floods in Accra in a space of a week. Far away in France, another disaster struck as the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris was also engulfed in flames on Monday. President Akufuado subsequently took to Twitter to send words to, of condolence to victims of the Notre Dame fire. Let's show his post. So that's Nana Kufado's post. It says, the Ghanaian people and I are shocked by the news of the destruction of the great Paris Persian Cathedral, Notre Dame, one of the most iconic buildings of world civilization, and extend our heartfelt condolences to President Emmanuel Macron and to the French people on their great loss. However, his actions seem to irk a section of Ghanaians who believe the president was being a hypocrite by ignoring victims of the Accra floods and rather commiserating with others in a foreign land. Let's read some of those comments. And we have Doku Steven who says, hypocrisy is really killing Africans and our leaders. Why can't a president have such a heart for his citizens, but rather outsiders? Hashtag Nanado, love your citizens. And Park says, why is the presidency of Ghana so quick in sending commiserating messages to foreign nationals when natural disasters befall them but can, can't do the same for its citizens? Over the past week, about 10 Ghanaian lives lost through rains and no message from the presidency. And here they are. And Redeemer says, don't speak for some of us, sir. Ghana is more important for us. Thanks. And David Kwame says, how about those who perished during the flood in Ghana? Hmm. And we have Kosi who says, reminds me of those husbands who will be nice to people in town, but won't give chop money at home. Interesting analogy. 
And K Dancer says Makola Market, Kijetia Market had the same incident, but we didn't see this kind of response. Yesterday, people died from flood related flood related issues, but in Shushenim, we we did we did do, do do you sorry. And we have this is as Mr. This tweet says, Mr. President, I'm still waiting for the presidency to say something about the rain that killed at least seven people over the weekend. Oh, yes, we all know Notre Dame Cathedral is about architecture, history, and culture. In fact, it's more or less like religion, but Ghana first la. Well, let's move away from that and talk about education. Is our history being re rewritten? We all know there are reforms being made in the education se sector. Per the new curriculum, students will be asked to examine the sources of evidence about the role of J.B. Dankwa in the Gold Coast Youth Conference and the presence of and present a narrative of the role of J.B. Dankwa. On social media, the government is being accused of trying to rewrite the history of Ghana after making these changes to the basic education curriculum. Well, the GES board says it's not deliberate to pick J.B. Dankwa and elevate him ahead of Nkuma. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Let me start off by saying that no one can rewrite the history of Ghana. No one can rewrite the history of Ghana. And no one will attempt to do that. I think this issue about J.B. Dankwa has come up. And uh, the professor who chaired the NACA, who chairs NACA, is a historian, Professor Osei Kwatin at UCC. And on one of the platforms, this is what he said. Maybe with your permission, I can sure. read. There are, of course, there are some parts, maybe I'll read them. But he yeah. says, my take. History is chronological and periodical in nature. In the chronology and periodic sequence, J.B. Dankwa came first before Kwame Nkrumah in the face of the curriculum, whereas Nkrumah will be featuring in all events that took place from 1957 onwards when he emerged on the political space. J.B. Dankwa will be conspicuously missing JHS and SHS history curriculum will be focusing in detail on CPP as a breakaway party from U UGCC, CPP winning 1951 elections, Nkrumah as the leader of government business, Nkrumah as prime minister, 1990. Well, very interesting. No one can rewrite history. Now let's take some tweets that people had put up on the same topic and uh, we have chief boot who says so the new curriculum for basic schools which was introduced by governments recently puts great emphasis on jb dankwa while kwame Nkrumah's role during the independence era is put on the back burner ghana politics and baba musa says so akufado has surreptitiously found a way to sneak in his uncle's name, J.B. Dankwa, into class five history book, shaking my head. And Kojo Spoon says, forcing people to read about their family members, Kwame Nkrumah is the greatest. J.B. Dankwa to, and with some laughing emojis. And Eli Kem, E.K. E. Kotoko says, Osage for Dr. Kwame Nkrumah's name appears just once in the entire new syllabus of primary one to six. But guess what? J.B. Dankwa's name appears nine times. When you are told he will move the capital to Chebi, this is how he's doing it. Our history is now. And Derry says, Kwame Nkrumah's name can't be suppressed. Come on, for J.B. Dankwa, there was clearly a hidden agenda shaking my head. And Miss ba Miss Bagless says it looks like left to some of you the name J B Dankwa will be expunged from Ghana's history books. No. And Kofi Bento tweets Kwame Nkrumah is more popular than J B Dankwa, but J B Dankwa is an important part of our history. None of them must be denied his position as J B has suffered. 
And this is from at Truth Face Addy, who says, How you end your life defines your history. JB Dankwa was a traitor, CIA agent. That's how he ended up. Now let's talk about football. It's make or break for Manchester United as it seeks to overturn a one-goal deficit suffered at the hands of Barcelona at Old Trafford last week. The Red Devils are gunning for what could possibly be their only trophy this year, having lost out on the Premier League, FA Cup and the Carabao Cup. Do you think soldiers, lads, can escape the snares of Lionel Messi and Luis Suarez? And Juventus comes up against Ajax. The first game ended one all, and the old ladies of Italian football have a better chance of progressing through Ajax. It's showing glimpses of going through. Let's hop onto Facebook to read some of those comments. Before then, let's speak to Bened Benedict Ousudankwa for some analysis. Benedict, hello, how are you doing? Hi, Selena, I'm doing fine. Thanks for having me. I'm amazing. Um, why is everyone so fixated on this Man U Bassa game, anyways? Well, of course, you'll be excited about the game, especially looking at everything that has gone in, mm -hmm. uh, in terms of uh, what's been happening with these teams in this year's Super Champions League. And, I mean, with specific attention and focus on Manchester United, you look at Manchester United, how uh, things were not really going well for them in this year's Champions League, at a point they had to even start their manager, yeah. Jose Mourinho, because they were underperforming. And all of a sudden, they bring in Oligan Asushe, who was doing very well in the domestic front, was in the team because I mean, UEFA Champions League, uh, they were especially against a very difficult side that in Paris and Germany that most uh, pundits uh, tipped to win this year's UEFA Champions League. And for Manchester United, as uh, well, you know, progress at the expense of Paris and Germany. And then uh, the attention uh, obviously came on the team that well, this is a team that can do something in this year's UEFA Champions League. I mean, looking at all the uh, things that were not going right for the side and all of a sudden they've been able to turn things around mm. against a very hard team in Paris Saint Germain. And of course, if they are coming up against the Barcelona team that uh, this year have been playing very well in the league and also in the UEFA Champions League, they, they kept a hundred percent record in the group uh, stages and in the uh, knockout stages. It was amazing how to stop the side uh, the opponents to reach this stage and of course Lionel Messi is just in a form of his life that's scoring so many goals and kind and uh, leading the European top scorer chart. It tells you that, I mean, uh, everything sets up very, very nice for this game. Okay. The Lionel Messi factor, the Barcelona factor playing very well, we can week out and get them results in both the domestic league and the UEFA Champions League. And then the Manchester United factor where things were not going well for them and suddenly managed to turn things around and then we're going to associate managing, you know, to beat Paris and Jamal. So, I mean, factors make it very nice and that's the reason why people cannot go away and talk about this great fixture later tonight. But you, you, certainly there's been a lot of surprises from Manchester United this year but you think they can pull a surprise on this game in Camp, um, Camp Nou? Well, to pull a surprise huh, that's a very difficult one. I mean, yeah, they've been doing it this season. They went away uh, to pitch Juventus by two goals to one uh, in Italy also went away to win against Paris and Germain. So on the page or by page of this, one can easily say that they can go away and get a good result against Barcelona. But we also have to look at Barcelona and how they perform this season uh, at their own backyard as they come you know, they, they, they hardly will take in goals, they hardly will lose much there. And of course, when you look at that factor as well, it makes it very difficult for Manchester United. But you know something, football has a different language. You know, as I would look at it on paper and say that straight away, Barca are favorite. Football language can tell you that yes, Barca are favorite. But at the end of the day, at the end of 90 minutes, it will happen that Manchester United will go there to win. But from a very sane point of view, from a pundit, of course, I will tell you that Manchester United have no chance at all in this game against Barcelona. But football, as I mentioned, has a different language. And at the end of 90 minutes, it can speak well for Manchester United. So I am okay. But on paper, Barca are favorite to win. Mm, mm. But personally, which two teams do you think will sail through today and why? Well, uh, as I mentioned on people, of course, between Manchester United and Barcelona, looking at their current form and uh, what happened in Manchester United's last game as well as Barcelona's last game and everything that they've been doing, the players coming up against each other, I would say that uh, Barca will progress at the expense of Manchester United. But the other team involving Juventus and Ajax is one that we still have for because Ajax is not proving that 
uh, they are one of the best teams uh, underrated, but they play very well and they are yeah. very strong. Uh, shoot four scores that on any day can cause havoc. Uh, see how uh, they eliminate So you the think they can so cause hav havoc for Juve? Tonight, on paper, straight away, Barca is going to run. Anything can happen. But I think that Barca is going to make the next level competition. I, I was asking, you think um, Ayas can um, cause havoc for Juve? Yes, Ayas can. I mean, Ayas can. Ayas can. Have been playing some delightful football in the UEFA Champions League. Yes, their record is uh, for itself. That if you're a team as experienced as Juventus, and you, you take your, your leg off the pedal and think that I have the team that you can provide, then you would have to revise your goal. They've been doing some amazing things in this year's Champions League, and it will not come to me as a surprise if they're able to, you know, edge Juventus out of uh, the Championship. But I, I still think Juventus to me the next stage of the competition. They have uh, Cristiano Ronaldo who. We can be out in the UEFA Champions League. Always would want to, you know, write history and score more goals. So I think that that is down another factor. Uh, what was for events, but I'm not going to lay that out. But if I did ask me the two teams that I think will qualify uh, tonight, Barca is for me. Okay, thank you very much, Benedict Owusu Dankwa, for those interesting comments and predictions. Now let's hop onto Facebook to read some of those comments. And we have Davis, who says Ajax 3, Juventus 1. So he's predicting his scores. And Joseph Owusu Yosin says Juvi for the win. And Sadat Larry Kokoko says, I think I'm going for Ajax because they play, they play and they're having a good team. So he believes they would win. And Abu Abu says Barcelona 2, Man United 0. That's his prediction. And Sadat says Manchester United need, needs Obinim sticker immediately. And Shun Berman Pofu says 3 0 against United. And we have Tony who says great tackle from Smalling. He, pay, he passes the ball to Marshall. Long pass to Pogba. He dribbles to Pique and crosses the ball to Lukaku. What can Lukaku do with the ball? Oh, lovely finish from Lukaku. Still five minutes to go at the camp, at camp of New. Man United 1, Bassa Flona 4. And Kweku AJ says, anything to play for. Juvi stands favorite, but Ajax can't be underestimated. The whole world will marvel after the game. And this is from Jim Fee, who says Ajax 3, Juventus 1. And Owusu Yosin is voting for Ju Juve to win. And so that says, I think I'm going for Ajax because they're playing and having a good team. And we have Charles, who says Man United will carry the day 2-1 in favor of United. It's time for us to take a breather, and we will be back. You can still watch Enjoy News Interactive with me, Selina Ampo. Another story of Ghana to the world, a Ghanaian comedian by name Kojo Enim has become an internet sensation after he got a golden buzzer by Simon Cowell, propelling him into the semi-finals of Britain's Got Talent show in 2019 after he gave an impressive performance with his comedy. Kojo Enim made Simon Cowell laugh so much to, at his jokes that he reached for the golden buzzer. Getting a golden buzzer is a big deal because each judge may press their golden buzzer only once during the season. And Simon Cowell gave his to Kojo, who says Ghanaians are not funny. Well, it's time for us to do our Tuesday thoughts. And we have Karuna who says, never disclose your problems unless you are sure of a trustworthy listener. Hashtag Tuesday thoughts. And Akriti says, circumstances change, but feelings don't. Hashtag Tuesday thoughts. And Adam says, never turn your back on those in need of help. The universe will find a way to reward you for your good deeds. Hashtag Tuesday thoughts. And we have BZA who says, just be you and do you. You 
you are not competing live life at your own pace hashtag Tuesday thoughts and Kapow says nothing messes up your Friday like realizing it's only Tuesday yes we can't wait for Friday and hashtag Tuesday thoughts and Senny Ray says life is too short to worry about stupid things have fun fall in love regret nothing and don't let people bring you down hashtag coats hashtag life hashtag Tuesday thoughts and we have Ayub who says, value yourself, you are a gift. Nothing would have been the same if you didn't exist. Hashtag Tuesday thoughts. And motivational, motivation coach says, success is walking from failure to failure with no loss of enthusiasm. This is a quote from Winston Churchill. Hashtag motivation, hashtag Tuesday thoughts. That's all we have for you on today's show. Join News Interactive with me, Selinam Ampo. Join us tomorrow. Bye.